Anthony Albanese, welcome. Good to be with you, Barry. Oh, it's a fair call, isn't it? Just time to steady the ship and provide some stability. Oh, let's get real, Barry. We've had a couple of people uh, step down for family reasons. There's no suggestion that there's any reason other than uh, personal ones and understandable ones. We do have changes in politics. We're dealing with human beings. There have been nine, uh, no less than nine, coalition members announced that they won't be standing at the next election, including Joanna Gash, who in Gilmore has already got a new job as uh, mayor of Shoalhaven. And uh, there's a question there over uh, the issue of Office of Profit under the, uh, from the Crown regarding her doing uh, two jobs. So what is it about this government then that invites those sort of headlines? Two ministers leave voluntarily and that's the sort of uh, headline we get. What, what is it? Why, why, why do you attract that sort of attention? It's not up to me to explain the media. That's a, a, a job for the couch. But uh, what uh, we know is that uh, this has been an incredibly stable government. Uh, we saw uh, more changes to ministries uh, from uh, week to week in the initial period of the Howard government than we've seen uh, from the current government. It is an, an orderly process whereby we've had, I think, uh, very good replacements found for people who've been very good ministers. But you ring uh, uh, a Labor MP at random and, and you don't have to ring around for very long before you get them to start criticising some of the processes of this week, especially the timing of this announcement. Well, the timing of the announcement, of course, is logical because the decision regarding who the Senate leader uh, will be for the Federal Parliamentary Labor Party is a decision for caucus. Now under those circumstances you either announce it pretty close to when the caucus is meeting or you have a special caucus meeting with people flying in and then you would have had the criticism really the cost of uh, doing such a process. But you've read some of the quotes in the paper and they don't make them up. Is there there's a need for more discipline within your ranks? I think uh, at the beginning of the year uh, there's uh, uh, it's an election year. Um, I uh, certainly can't uh, explain uh, what everyone uh, has to say. They say it speak for themselves. Well, but Robert... what, what it is the case is that this is an orderly process. What's been happening, Barry, since August 2010 is that people have said uh, that this, election, this government uh, wouldn't last. The fact is we have lasted. We've been stable. More than 430 pieces of legislation through the House of Representatives with not a single defeat. And uh, now we have an election date. I mean, in the lead up to the Prime Minister's speech, we had journalists. You couldn't talk to a journalist without them asking you, when's the election going to be? So they asked when the election would be. When we told them, they've said, why did you tell us? It's a bit unorthodox though, isn't it? Were you drawn into that process? Uh, I was. I was consulted uh, last week uh, by the, the Prime Minister. I, of course, set the parliamentary timetable, so it was no surprise to me when we set the timetable that there were two potential dates uh, in September. Uh, we couldn't have uh, gone in grand final week, and uh, once it went into uh, October, and uh, the NRL grand final, of course, is, uh, is at the beginning there, uh, what there would have been was a clamour uh, come July and the lead up to August of when's the election going to be, it would have been uh, relentless. What we've done is provide uh, certainty there. Uh, everyone who had a look but at but it would have worked Tony out Abbott the date and anyway. And the people who put his campaign together right. as well. He would have worked out the date. Uh, they're not that silly. In spite of their rhetoric and in spite of the fact that they've been out there uh, saying call an election, call an election, that's just about political rhetoric. Tony Abbott hasn't actually even tried to hold uh, the government to account in question time. He's just tried to, to wreck the parliament, uh, tried to argue that an election should be called. He's failed. The government has been stable. The government's been getting on with the business of governing uh, since August 2010, while we've had this wrecking exercise by Tony Abbott. Do you think uh, Robert McCullen will be the next to provide the crisis headline? Is there a chance that he will uh, leave parliament before the election? Oh, look, I think that's very unlikely. Um, there's speculation about this. Again, it goes to uh, the ongoing speculation that the media seem to uh, want to be obsessed about. Uh, as soon as you get some stability, they say, well, what if? Uh, but in this case, is... though, it, it, isn't it the case that, uh, that he might be given a judicial appointment by the O'Farrell government? 
Do you wonder about the politics behind that? Well, this is hypothetical on hypothetical, Barry. Uh, the fact is that uh, Rob McClelland is continuing to serve as the member for Barton. Uh, there'll be a pre-selection for his replacement and uh, that'll take place over the coming month. And if, though, he was to leave in the next month or two, that would be too far out, wouldn't it, from September? You would have to have a by-election. You well, couldn't leave a player. There, there's Barton. no indication that he is going. Mm -hmm. but so you, don't, you haven't got any inside knowledge as to whether he's thinking thing it through? No. No. The, um, the possibility, of course, is when you talk about pre-selection, is that Morris Yemmer uh, could be the candidate. Would that be a good idea? Well, that's a matter for the ALP rank and file in Barton. And uh, they'll make uh, their decision depending upon who puts themselves forward. But a friend of Eddie O'Beats? Well, Morris Yemmer, I think if you have a look at uh, the recent history uh, in the party, I think it's pretty clear that uh, Morris Yemmer and Eddie Obeid uh, weren't good friends when Eddie Obeid supported him being replaced as Premier. Maybe at that point, but he said at the, at the hearing there was a time when he visited Eddie Obeid's house two or three times a week. So he was once a friend. Once a friend, but clearly a, uh, a major falling out. Uh, Morris Yemmer, I think, uh, will make his own decisions of whether he puts himself forward and then the rank and file in Barton will make a decision based upon that. And do you accept if he put himself forward that you would really impose the stench of this issue right in the middle of the federal arena? Uh, no, I don't. I think that uh, Morris Yemmer is someone who has been active uh, in that area. His uh, state seat was close to uh, the Barton area. But uh, let's not talk about hypotheticals upon hypothetical. Uh, the pre-selection hasn't been called yet. Morris Yemmer hasn't said that he's standing. What went wrong in New South Wales? Why is it far and away now Labor's worst date in terms of seats likely to be lost at the federal election? I think clearly there were problems with the culture of the New South Wales branch and uh, far be it for me to... Uh, I've been talking about those issues for some mm -hmm. time, Barry, and uh, I think we have a culture where you have a dominant faction that's able to uh, therefore uh, carry its way without being, having to argue its case where the end outcome is known. I think that creates a problem in the party. Uh, the good news is that people like Tony Sheldon and Sam Dasiari are committed to reforming that culture. We need to move away from the situation whereby any faction has any control and tries to direct its members over who it, uh, it, it elects in terms of uh, the parliamentary party processes. That doesn't operate in Canberra. I mean, in Canberra, the factions don't matter around the cabinet table. They don't matter in terms of, uh, of leadership ballots or those issues. That's a good thing. That's broken down the block uh, voting mentality. And that's been part of the problem in New South Wales. That's why we need reform. That's why we need to open up processes and have more proper direct democracy from the party members. Yeah, because Tony Sheldon, who you mentioned, of course, is from the New South Wales Labor right, and he talked about the behaviour of property scammers and lobbyists and, and said it is essentially the fault of the Labor right. Um, no need, there shouldn't be any blame shifting, no dodging of responsibility. Now, you would say here, here to that. Absolutely, that's a good thing. It's a good thing that uh, someone like Tony Sheldon, a senior member of the New South Wales right, is uh, acknowledging what the issues are. Uh, Sam Dasciari's done it. Uh, John Robertson, as the leader of uh, State Labor, uh, has done that. I noticed some reforms in terms of uh, processing and accountability that he'll be pursuing in the state parliament. Uh, that's a good thing. Clearly, there's been a problem. We need to fix it. And the New South Wales right just uh, turned up too many B-grade politicians. Well, I think uh, if you have a look at the culture and the way that it's changed, I think that people like uh, Chris Bowen, uh, Ed Husick, uh, Jason Clare, Tony Burke, the quality of uh, the contribution of the New South Wales right uh, to Canberra has changed markedly. Uh, the culture has changed at the national level. Clearly that needs to happen at the state level as well. Now, a couple of issues on, on the Craig Thompson arrest. Um, Julia Gillard stood by Craig Thompson all the way along. What does that say about her judgment? Well, Craig Thompson, of course, uh, hasn't been uh, proven guilty of anything and the legal processes need to work their way through. Um, Mel Bruff has had a finding in a federal court by Justice Raries that is damning of his involvement in the Ashby affair and uh, Tony Abbott is standing by him as an LEP candidate. 
that stands in stark contrast to he's Craig not, Thompson. He's, he's not facing 150 charges. That stands in stark contrast to Craig Thompson, who's no longer a member of the Labor Party. What about the, uh, the issue, though, as to whether you should continue to accept his vote when the opposition will not? Well, this is just silly, Barry, and you know it's silly. Uh, people who are elected to Parliament are entitled to represent their electorates on the floor of the Parliament. We saw, I think, uh, one of the, uh, the silliest moments in, in Parliament in history last year where Tony Abbott and Christopher Pine running from the Parliament like little schoolboys uh, to uh, avoid uh, being counted in a division. I mean, we need to be a bit mature about this and acknowledge that if you're a member of Parliament, uh, your vote isn't accepted by any side or not. Your vote's counted according to where you sit. On the calling of the election date, the Nova Paris thing, Julie Gillard's now been criticised for not consulting enough. Now, as you well know, that was one of the charges levelled against Kevin Rudd. Is she now falling into that trap? Well, I think uh, history will show, Barry, that uh, no uh, Prime Minister has ever held a full caucus meeting and had a discussion of when uh, they think the election date should be before they go to Yarralumla. I mean, for goodness sake, uh, this, if, if, if nothing else, one of the things that this saves is uh, poor junior burgers from the media sitting outside Yarralumla with umbrellas up over winter uh, every Sunday waiting to see if uh, the Prime Ministerial car will come past. Uh, this is a normal process. It's the prerogative of the Prime Minister to set a date. Uh, it was obvious to uh, anyone who actually looked at it. There, there were only two possible dates. Uh, the Prime Minister uh, chose one of them and uh, has announced it. Uh, that is, in my view, a good thing. It confirms that the government will serve full term. It stops the nonsense of journalists asking every single day, will there be an election? It uh, shows up uh, Tony Abbott's uh, wrecking campaign for the failure that it has been because this parliament will serve full term. That's a good thing. We're almost out of time, but who should play Anthony Albanese in the telly movie? Oh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with Anthony LaPaglia. I, we could be <laughs> twins, you know. Uh, it's pretty hard to complain about that. And clearly, based on what you've said, you're not surprised that underbelly stars are named to, to fill all <laughs> those New South Wales right figures. But... Well, we'll wait and see uh, if this happens. And uh, if it does, we'll wait and see uh, how accurate it is. Thanks for your time this morning. Good to be with you, Barry.